Hello, and welcome to our first virtual community open house for the Golden Triangle Zoning and Design Guidelines Update Project. This presentation will start with a brief overview of the Zoning Update Project to remind everyone of the scope, schedule, and where to find more information about our progress since the last public meeting. Next, and most importantly, we will share information with you about the preliminary zoning framework and give you some instructions on how to provide your feedback via the online survey. Before we begin, we wanted to extend a sincere thank you for taking the time to learn more about the proposed changes to the Golden Triangle Zoning. We appreciate your participation in using these online options while everyone takes extraordinary measures to ensure the safety of our families and communities. So thank you. Okay, let's get started with the project overview. As a reminder, the purpose of this project is to update both the zoning and design guidelines that apply to the Golden Triangle in order to implement the recommendations of the Golden Triangle Neighborhood Plan, which was adopted in 2014. It's also to apply approaches and procedures that are more up to date with other citywide policies. Downtown Golden Triangle Zone District, or DGT, applies to most of the neighborhood, as you can see, as the yellow area in the map. The last time it was substantially updated was in 1994. Similarly, the design guidelines that applied to the DGT zone district were last updated in 2002. We initiated the project back in March of 2019 and have made consistent progress since then. We are nearing the end of the preferred strategy phase and are looking for confirmation from the community that we are on the right path based on earlier feedback. After receiving this round of input, we will finalize the preferred zoning approach and begin drafting new text for the Denver Zoning Code. The new text will be available for public review prior to beginning the formal adoption process with Planning Board and City Council, which is currently targeted for fall 2020. The Golden Triangle Neighborhood Plan, completed and adopted in 2014, established a bold vision for the neighborhood. These 12 objectives summarized from the plan and also broken down into three topic categories of land use, building form, and street level experience have served as our foundation from the beginning of this effort and continue to guide our decisions. Interim report number two, Zoning Framework and Alternatives, was posted to the project website for review in mid-January. This report is useful in understanding what existing tools we have in the Denver Zoning Code to address the objectives from the Golden Triangle Neighborhood Plan. It also summarizes the outcomes from recent outreach and documents the results of our evaluation of different zoning tools against key criteria. You can find this report and all project-related materials at the website www.denvergov.org slash golden triangle. Now it's time to introduce the preliminary preferred zoning framework. The current DGT zoning utilizes a one-size-fits-all approach where the same standards apply to all projects regardless of their overall scale and lot size. The proposed change is for zoning standards to become stronger as the size and scale of the project gets larger because of the increasing influence that it has on the street and the neighborhood. Projects on all sizes of lots would still need to meet minimum street level design and activity requirements, but projects on larger lots would be required to meet much stronger minimum standards because of the oversized impact that they represent. Also, as projects get larger, new limitations on the overall mass and scale of the building would also apply. The strongest limitations would apply to the point tower form, which is shown on the right, to compensate for a taller height allowance. The result is a system where zoning tools apply in an increasing manner related to the overall size and scale of the project. Lot sizes are categorized by their width facing the street as narrow, 75 feet or less, standard, 75 to 150 feet, and wide, greater than 150 feet. The point tower form would only be available on wide lots to ensure that there is an opportunity for appropriate separation between these tallest of buildings. Based on your feedback, an important concept for the new zoning to address is for larger projects to provide support for neighborhood priorities. 
Thankfully, this type of system already exists in DGT. A project is allowed to be built up to a specified amount of building floor area or a base maximum by right without any special conditions. Then a property owner or developer may qualify for additional building floor area or incentives by supporting various neighborhood priorities up to an overall maximum. Although this system currently exists, it is outdated and needs to be recalibrated to focus on the most important priorities of 2020 and beyond based on current plans and policies, not those from 1994. These have been identified as housing affordability, promoting neighborhood character, and public art. Note that many other priorities that were discussed earlier in the process are being addressed directly by other zoning tools rather than incentives. The conceptual incentive system establishes a base maximum of approximately five stories that ena enables someone to develop a small to medium sized project by right. Note that projects below the base ma maximum must still meet minimum citywide requirements, but would not need to meet any special conditions under the revised DGT zoning. Projects are then allowed to exceed the base maximum up to an overall maximum if they address specific DGT incentive standards. First, by making a commitment to meet the housing affordability incentive, a project would automatically qualify for incentive floor area up to that overall maximum. Projects may also adjust their housing affordability commitment if they support other neighborhood priorities like protecting an existing building or installing public art. Note that a minimum amount of housing affordability will still apply to all projects that exceed the base maximum. This table summarizes the proposed base and overall maximum limits for each lot size and building form. The maximums are based on a concept called floor area ratio or FAR. This number represents the total allowed building floor area divided by the area of the lot. You may notice that the overall maximum numbers are higher than currently allowed. This is partly because area that is reserved for parking is not currently included in the calculation of total building area. We are proposing to change that and include parking in the calculation since it equally adds to the overall bulk and scale of the building. The proposed zoning includes several tools to better shape larger buildings as they get taller, including upper story setbacks, mass reduction, and limitations on the size and separation of point towers. One example is a requirement called an upper story setback. This tool can make a building feel like it's only three to five stories tall from the pedestrian's experience, while it may in fact be much higher. Upper story setbacks can be especially useful with taller buildings like the point tower form. In the image above, you can see the street facing side on the left incorporates an upper story setback across the entire frontage, whereas the side that's on the right only has a setback across a portion of the frontage. Enhancing street level activity has consistently been identified as a top priority to be addressed in the new zoning. We are proposing a number of tools, including requiring a setback in locations where residential units are located at the ground floor. This provides space for patios, stoops, porches, and landscaping to create a more appropriate transition between the public sidewalk and private home. In addition, larger projects are also proposed to be required to provide non-residential uses at the ground floor, such as retail, commercial, or office space, and to also create publicly accessible open spaces at that ground level. The eclectic nature of the neighborhood, mixing old with new and large with small, is partly what makes this area so vibrant and exciting. The proposed zoning promotes the protection of existing buildings that add to the character of the Golden Triangle through the incentive system. A new voluntary classification of character building that is more flexible than landmark designation will support the reuse of these buildings and discourage their demolition. 
Okay, now that you've reviewed all the presentation slides, it's time to get ready for the online survey. Congratulations, you're on a roll. You just completed step one in preparation for the online survey. Step two is to review the five topic boards at the project website to see more details on the proposed zoning tools. Step three then is to provide your feedback via the online survey. Go to the project website at www.denvergov.org slash golden triangle to find the link. Finally, tell your friends, neighbors, and colleagues to visit the project website, learn more about the proposed zoning, and to also take the survey. Here are a few important next steps to keep in mind as we move forward. We will summarize the preferred strategy for the new zoning in a third interim report and make it available towards the end of April. Then we will tackle the writing of the new zoning code text and expect to release a draft for public review in the summer, hopefully July. Stay tuned to the website for updates. Thank you again for your time and interest in the Golden Triangle Zoning Update Project. We really appreciate your feedback. Thanks.